my first victory over machines. It's quite simple. And on today's episode, I'll be teaching you how I made this coffee bar or breakfast station out of reclaimed wood from a used pallet. I live in a tiny house and my kitchen has no oven. So this was my solution to that problem and it's conveniently located in front of my kitchen. If you're new here, welcome! And don't forget to check out my other videos for more cheap or free DIYs. And if you like my content, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell for new videos every Friday. And let's jump into the tutorial. For me, of course, the first thing to do is to separate all the boards from this used palette, since I like to make most of my projects using recycled materials. I use the wood from two different sized palettes, one with half inch boards and the other one with one inch as well as two long boards that I had from a previous DIY that were 2 inch thick. To separate this bigger palette, I required my husband's help, because I literally tried for two days on my own, removing only about three boards maybe, and he just... he did it in 20 minutes, okay? While he does that, watch me devour this bag of chips very fast. Once that is out of the way, we can start cutting the boards to size. I took all my measurements, taking into consideration this table oven that we bought, so that it will give the appearance of a built-in. Here I am cutting all the boards that I will use on the sides and the bottom, from that 1 inch board. Also, I cut two of the thinner planks in half to use as a reinforcement on the inside of the belt since I don't have clamps that are big enough to hold this amount of boards. Make sure you leave enough space at the bottom to add the floor piece, since we will be attaching it from the inside. Laying all the boards with the nice size down, I added glue in between the boards and on the cutted long plants, and joined everything as tightly as I could, adding nails to get everything together as shown on the video. You can use screws as well, but I just don't happen to have a drill. I also added a strip of wood where I wanted the oven shelf to be, making sure it was level. To make the actual shelf, you just need to clamp together some boards, 
but first, check if your corners don't need a trim as a consequence of the boards that you just added to hold the sides. I know I wanted my shell to go from front to back of the furniture to hold the oven completely. But you can also make them less deep and skip this step. For the top, I decided to go with a sort of butcher block, cutting the thicker boards in half lengthwise, and then making shorter blocks to create an intermittent pattern. If you watch closely, you'll see that I'm switching between two halves on the first row and two quarts and a half for the next row. And while you are here, you can also cut the other 2 inch board in half that will later become the support for the upper shelving. I unfortunately cut the pieces too short, because it came to me last minute that I wanted the pusher block to be on top and not in between the boards, so I made 3 inch pieces and add them to the design wherever I thought they looked right. Then, I glue the pieces together, adding clamps crosswise. Again, I like to glue everything facing down, since the floor provides a level surface for the boards to sit on. Keep that in mind. While that dries, I'll finish the rest of the piece with some sanding. You want to get them baby smooth. The lower the number, the bigger the grid. Start with something like an 80 and move your way up to a 120 or a 180. And don't forget to use protection on this part, especially around the mouth and nose. Being almost Black Friday, I could not miss the chance to buy an electric sander. This one is small but powerful, and only cost me around $30. I'll link in the description in case you want to check it out. Removing all the dust first, it is time to paint. I gave this piece two layers. Blah, blah. I gave these pieces two layers on the inside, since it's the hardest part to paint once it's assembled. I also stained the oven shelf and added a coat of a protective sealer to make it waterproof. And once the paint was dry, I got to join the pieces together using clamps to grab the shelf to the bars that they sit on the sides, so that I could glue and nail the rest of the union parts together. You can choose to add reinforcements on the back to keep it from moving too much while you assemble, but I found that once that everything is dry, the thing ends up being pretty sturdy. Once your butcher block is dry, you can fit it onto the rest of the cabinet and check if you don't need to make some extra trim into the sides. I wanted the front edge of my counter to be chamfered, so I went over the edge with a jigsaw at 45 degrees. Get everything together once more 
because now we are going to measure where we want the upper shelving to be. With the help of a clamp, I got the side bar in the position that I wanted to be. And using a level, I marked where I wanted the shelves to be. The idea is to make a space where the shelves can rest on, almost like if the sides were holding the boards in place. Figure out the angle and make parallel cuts inside the markings. This way you'll be able to remove the slimmer slices easily with the screwdriver as shown on this clip. The only thing left to cut are the shelves. I'm using two boards for the highest one and three for the one below. Cut them down and glue them together with clamps. Back to the butcher block. I finished this piece smoothing it best I could with a hand plane, sanding it all around and added the same tin and sealant that I added to the shelves. Keep in mind this project is going to look a bit rustic, as a consequence of the materials and tools that we are using. I honestly enjoy the look, but as I am learning as I go, feel free to give your advice in the comment section to help us all get better at woodworking. After sanding down the pieces for the upper shelving, we can move to painting the sides and tinting the shelves. And before painting the rest of the cabinet, I decided to fill in the gaps that were between the boards on the front to make it look like if it was a solid piece. You can also choose to mask this gap with a strip of wood. Give the sides a nice two coats of paint and leave to dry for at least two hours. And nail the counter to the top. And once everything is dry, you can go ahead and put everything back together to mark the height of the shelves. Check that everything is straight and set a plan for gluing. We first got the sides on with glue and clamps, and then added a bunch of nails. Then. We put the shelves on, and since they were a bit wonky, decided to also add some glue and nails to hold them in place. Leave that to dry overnight. Eight hours later. for watching. I know this video came out a bit long for what I usually make, but I think it was my biggest project so far. Let me know in the comment section what kind of projects you would like to see me do next. And I will see you guys next time.